He doesn't mind the outside. All oh, this contact. Dornan's gone. Dornan's through the grass and into the wall. Oh, two wheeling it off into the booties and into the tyre barrier. In fact, missed the tyre barrier. Bounces back on in true VN fashion. There's a points are out the window. Nobody has to care about that now. It's who crosses the line in 15 laps first. And it's a brilliant start from the Victorian on the front row. Travis Lindorf, a blinder away from the line. And he will quite comfortably lead into turn number one. I could see a little bit of smoke further back down the field. I think that's around seventh or eighth position. Not quite sure which car that's coming from. But Travis Lindorf tips it into turn number one in the lead ahead of Dornan with Johnson and Harvey going side by side for position number three and I think it's the West Aussie that's got it well Dornan all locked up sideways just about keeps it on the road a lot of action side by side O'Callaghan's all crossed up can he keep it off the wall he can big field streaming their way through this is their moment this is their time to shine the Nationals Preston Pino has got a guard rubbing there on the side of the car I saw them working under that uh, that guard just a few moments before it was meant to go out to the grid so uh, not sure if something's not quite uh, you know fit fit to the car rides or something but it's certainly smoking down the long back straight and Daniel Johnson has taken position there in the number 35 machine here comes Brad Vaughan up the inside of Grant Johnson and he makes it stick so great move there from the South Australian so a bit of reshuffling at the front of the field but it's been like that all weekend long in saloon car so at the moment it's Lindorf Dornan with Harvey right up behind him in the fight for second a little bit of a tap there with the Ford ranging on on the back of the Holden. I spoke earlier on. No Ford victory in the Nationals since 2011. Harvey looks like he wants to change that here today. Certainly is. What is great is the state of origin aspect of this. We've got a South Australian, sorry, a Victorian, a South Australian, and a Western Australian, then another Western Australian, and he doesn't want to peel the number one off the side of his door. That's the purple car there. There's the number 55 streaming on through. That's Brad Vaughan out of South Australia. So, fantastic. No matter which way you look, you've got someone from your home state, and you've got a Ford or a Holden, whichever way you throw the blanket. Myself, I don't care which brand wins, but yeah, you got to go for the Victorians. <laughs> You're from South Aussie, so you can wave the flag there. But I've lived here quite a bit, so yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm off ready, buddy. I just want a good race out there, and we've already seen a good race out there on the racetrack at the moment. Lindorf had a great first lap, but uh, already Dornan closing that margin down, and here comes Vaughan up the inside of Harvey. So change for the Blue Oval, third position. Now in the hands of the South Australian Brad Vaughan, the Tickford Super 2 driver out there in the Stan Hotels machine. Car number 55 takes up third. He was flying in that race earlier on today. Got a five second penalty in heat number one, a five second penalty in heat number two. And it's, it's made his life difficult this weekend because it's put him further back on the grid for each and every race. But he shot through to finish second earlier on today. And he's trying to take second right here, right now on the outside of his fellow South Australian Dornan on the pit straight. Has he got the momentum? Has he got the move done? It's hard around the outside. Dornan's going to break late to try and hold it off. And he will do, but Vaughan says, no, I'm going to go around the outside. He doesn't mind the outside. All oh, this contact. Dornan's gone. Dornan's through the grass and into the wall. Oh, what a shame. What a shame for Scott Dornan. He's had a brilliant weekend, but it ends in the barrier, unfortunately for him. And now Vaughan's got to fight off Harvey behind. That was a nasty old shunt coming out of turn number one there as well. And he's back in the race. Have a look at that. He's clouded the wall. The flag he's took for cover. They were nice and safe. They were away from it. The last thing you want to do is see a saloon car coming charging at you in the right way. Industrial saloon car nationals. 15 laps is the journey here. And this is what I am expecting. Grant Johnson, Lowndes and... This car here, Johnson and Prestopino settling themselves early to go the journey, go the distance. Here we go. This is getting very racy early on. And that picked up the uh, the right front, so, sorry, the left front wheel on the Falcon, and it's essentially speared the Commodore off. Neither wanted to yield, did they? No. Neither wanted to give way to the other It was always going to end in tears. Yeah, exactly. It certainly was. You can see they both broke super late, and uh, contact, unfortunately, there. Uh, occurred down at turn number one. He was very well to uh, keep it facing in the right way, in the right way. Industrials, uh, saloon car nationals, so very nicely done. And here we are, Brad Vaughan with pace to burn at the moment. Six tenths uh, faster 
than the man he is caught up to. So here we are, line of stern, Vaughan forcing Lindorf to go defensive down at turn number two. And he's going to switch back up the inside at turn four. Things better of it. Lindorf with a bit of a left front lock up. That's going to affect his run out the corner and all the way down this very, very long and famous back straight here at Sandown International Raceway. This is where the Falcons are strong. The talk of the inline six versus the revs of the V6 in the Commodore starts to shine. Look at the 55 absolutely shadowing the 51 here. Ducks back in. Brad Vaughan not ready to make a move on Travis Lindorf here. In fact, he didn't really make any gains at all there. But I tell you what, the AU Army is starting to come back hard at Travis Lindorf at the moment. Interestingly enough, that the lap times of Brad Vaughan have been awesome. Even though he had a massive coming together on that left front, I'm really surprised that the steering geometry wasn't knocked around in that incident. Certainly was for the Dornan machine, but as you say, I think Vaughan has got away with that unscathed. He's trying to find a mirror after the last race. A bit of a, a tip for tat on uh, lap number one. He lost his mirror early in uh, the last race. He's managed to find a mirror, and uh, that will help him, I'm sure, later on in this race. Although, let's be honest, at the moment, he is not looking in the mirrors. He is looking ahead at Lindorf in front. The top four, line astern, 1.3 seconds separating the four, and the top three just seven. Tenths. Something I've just noticed, Scott Dornan charging back, currently in ninth place. A 123.83. There's only, uh, in fact, there's no other cars into the 123s. Was there a little bit of uh, contact down there at turn number four? There's certainly a bit of a move going on now with Brad Vaughan. He's got a little bit of an overlap as he is all the way out to the yellow line on the inside of the race circuit. And he's got that power, as you say, coming into effect at this stage of the straight. But Lindorf, surely, he's going to try and hold it around the outside, is he? No. Slots in right behind. And here's Harvey now. He's going to have a crack at the number 51 machine. And here he goes up the inside into Dandenong Road corner. He likes that overtaking opportunity. We saw him use it to great effect yesterday on the uh, race leader now, Brad Vaughan. But he uh, can't quite make it through on Lindorf this time through. And here comes Grant Johnson up the inside in the purple. Number one, not able to make it stick there. Grant Johnson was saying we just don't quite have the horsepower in a straight line this weekend. Mason Harvey just getting hung out to dry a little bit there. Had to go very tight into turn number nine that time. Lost all the momentum he had there. That is why number one of Grant Johnson has able to uh, close that gap. And uh, Travis Lindorf has been able to get back on with what's happening at the front window rather than the rear or side windows at this point in time because they cannot let Brad Vaughan get away. I'm still looking at these two on screen, the 19 of Adam Lowndes and the 35 of Daniel Johnson to come on strong. 15 laps is not a journey we've ever seen with saloon cars here. 10 and 12 laps has been the longest to go. And I'm going to put into question some of the fitness around uh, the race drivers as well. I'm not putting their ability at question, just the ability to go that distance. I was talking to these two after the last race. They uh, share the same garage. They're, they're good mates, these two. And uh, they were the two. They're leading the Victorian Championship, and they were thinking championship last race. But they said, right, gloves off now. We can uh, we can really put the hammer down in this finale. And speaking of putting the hammer down, Scott Dornan continues with that damage to turn out stupendous times. All oh, a bit of a lockup. I think that was for uh, Lowndes. But Prestopino coming under heavy fire from the Scott Dornan machine. Prestopino's had an up and down weekend roller coaster up the point again back down with damage back up again it's uh, <laughs> very much uh, been a wild ride for him this weekend as we see them go around the final sequence of turns dawn and slightly sideways i still don't think that car's tracking uh, entirely straight but he's doing a remarkable job with the damage let's see his lap time that time through yeah, again he's only uh, half a second oh this is hotting up now between uh, Lowndes and johnson here the commodore and the falcon Going at it, extreme left and then right of the track here. Dornan has got through on Prestopino, so the 99 just uh, languishing a bit there. Dornan is absolutely throwing everything at it, including the front bumper. I'm surprised he hasn't torn the fuel cap off. He's still got two mirrors on it, but it gets set to eject those before this race is out as well. Smoke. And smoke billowing out of the back. I'm not sure whether that's... I think that's actually out the exhaust pipe or, or something mechanical. It's not tyre rubbing because it increases with... Uh, uh, out the back there with uh, as he accelerates out of the corner disappears in a straight line here's this great battle going on between uh, Lowndes and Johnson fighting it out now for fifth and sixth on the road in fact they might be 
just quietly working in unison a little bit here to drag themselves back onto the back of uh, Grant Johnson and Mason Harvey. We don't like to talk about ties too much in motorsport, but talking up and down the lane uh, about uh, set object uh, between races, they were saying that they reckon if you were pretty soft and pretty nice on it early on in the weekend, that may pay dividends in towards the end of this final race because, of course, four races and qualifying this weekend. And oh, Lowndes really slow on to pit straight. Not sure if you missed the gear there, but through goes Daniel Johnson as if he was standing still. So hopefully uh, no issue there for Lowndes, but he's already coming under pressure from Dornan. We don't talk like about tyres in motorsport like the UN don't talk about diplomacy. <laughs> <laughs> it's the number one subject and that and how we're going to get to the airport at the end of the day to get home. <laughs> Here comes Dornan. Oh, oh, he's, locked up. he's locked up badly but he manages to get it stopped. That is not a Commodore that looks particularly nice to drive at the moment but he's doing a really nice job and now it's Lowndes with the lock up into turn number four. I think it was just a miss gear. Oh Leach. Leach has put it in the gravel and he is very much beached very deep uh, in the Daniel Road gravel then. trap. I see what you Leach is beached. <laughs> yes, is that, You're that a pilot, you didn't for? know it. <laughs> safety car, safety car. They need to stop racing, boys. There it is. Yellow flags and safety car boards out now. So, wow. Have a breather. Oh, it's Greg Johnson just hauling it up there. Yellows. He did a ripping job there. That was a tail end Charlie as well. Absolute tail end, tail end Charlie. I've just had uh, Steve Fries nipping over my shoulder and just pointing out we're just 100th off the lap record. Harvey on the last lap flying. Oh, Leach, major lockup inside front. And yep, very much beached there. Couldn't keep the momentum up through the gravel trap. Uh, tried to get it back going again, but to no avail. That car is well and truly stuck. But we, uh, we should be able to get this car out and be able to get back racing because there is still seven laps to go in this lengthy Saloon Cars Nationals race. 15 laps. And uh, if we look further down the field, we haven't mentioned too much uh, Reginald Ralph. He's, uh, you can see on the uh, timing screen on the left-hand side of your screens the uh, different shaded red. Uh, that's because that's the older spec class Oh, the older spec car class there, got it out in the end. Uh, and Reginald Ralph has been leading that pretty much all weekend long and continues to do so in this final race. But of course, Martin is now right up behind him, and Vaughan's got the same issue at the pointy end of the field. Of course, everybody closes back in behind. He had a four second lead when that safety car was called. Ranch has done a ter terrific job in the older cars this weekend. Unfortunately, we just saw Grant Johnson have a massive lockup trying to not get uh, all caught up with the, uh, the VN down the back of the field there. Here we go. This was what happened early on in the race. A big coming together, and it was contact with that right front wheel on the uh, on the Falcon. But have a look at that. Scott Dornan basically bounced off the wall, selected first, and uh, drove back out of the dirt. In fact, he might have had enough momentum just to slip it straight into second, spin the wheels up, and to get going. Let's have a look on Dornan Watch. It is position number seven he's made his way up to. And he's got through on a couple of the real hard, harder ones to get through on, particularly uh, Jacob Prestopino, a great racer in the number 99. I really enjoy watching him race in the Victorian series. But uh, Dornan's got through on him. And uh, everybody I would suggest right now, Dan, is having a big, deep breath. If they've got a drink on board, let's have a couple of mouthfuls of... Uh, Nice, uh, cool, refreshing liquid and uh, get uh, get the head back down and get on with it. This uh, certainly wasn't part of the plan to have a uh, car in the Danny Nong Road um, gravel trap, but uh, it is certainly a tough old pull out of there when you've got a big, heavy old Falcon and the Pathfinder trying to, to pull it out there. We may end up with uh, a little bit more support down there for the the uh, the tow vehicle trying to get the field out. Here we go, we're looking down just down the bit of the tail end of the field there and we go to the, the next shot at the front. The fourth car in line here is out of order and that is um, actually part of the, the older car class. I think that's, uh, is that Justin Shembury in car number 10? So he's out of order there, but the, the front runner's obviously starting to catch the, uh, the tail end of the field. Yeah, there's number 10 of Justin Shembury. That's why Grant Johnson was slamming on the yes. brakes because he was trying not to overtake uh, Shembury under safety car conditions. And we see the Jager machine moving out of the way. I think that is simply just to not get in the leader's way. He wants to stay out of the uh, the battle pack. Well, hopefully, anyway, it's, that's the reason clever, and not a it, yeah. mechanical issue. 
uh, out there on the racetrack in his older spec Ford Falcon. As we can see, some of those cars that we haven't seen much of this weekend. That's the thing. The action has been so good at the pointy end of the field. We haven't had a chance to look at some of the uh, drivers further back down the field. I believe this is the first safety car and saloon cars of the weekend, is it not? It probably has. Yeah, yeah, you're right. No, we haven't seen much in the way of safety cars. Um, we saw it in improved production in Formula Ford. But um, this is the Improved Production Nationals for Rightway Industrial. Doing a terrific job. The cars coming down here with all their, uh, all their great liveries on. And um, some of them starting to look a little bit more battle-worn than what they fronted up to the uh, race meeting here this weekend. Big Nash in the number 85. Did a good expose on uh, him at Winton. And you doing see, a terrific job. You see his face on the uh, back corner of the car. Really, uh, really good character is uh, Nash. And really good to see a really nicely presented machine. We've got to uh, got to say a big thank you to uh, everyone, all the organising committee at the uh, Saloon Cars who have put on such a great event this weekend. You mentioned DJ, but Nash Harris behind the scenes as well does a lot. And yeah, all the guys and girls down in the Saloon Cars should put on a great event, should be proud of the uh, what has been shown on the race this weekend the on-track racing has been very very hot really really exciting stuff and it's very much general versus uh, Ford at the point GM blue oval and general at one two at the moment and as we say it's been a uh, long drought for the blue ovals big shout out to Cam McKee from the Australian Sports Sedan Association of Victoria as the liaison with saloon cars ensuring that this massive field of 36 saloon cars can get out of the dummy grid everything went smoothly there so Cam's been working very hard and always good to keep an eye out for Cam when he goes racing he's got a very interesting iteration on the sports sedan and uh, can't wait to see them at the next round at Phillip Island the uh, second last weekend of September to round out the Victorian Championships. Don't forget Trade Alley down there in uh, just past the marshalling area at the back of the Pitton Paddock area there as well. We're about set to get going for a race start. Round five of the Victorian State Circuit Racing Championships with Phillip Island on the 22nd and 23rd of September. Get your entries in as we see the safety car peeling off. No, no, that no. was Leach. That was oh, sorry, Leech. you're one of the race cars. I just said, <laughs> caught that out of the corner of my eyes. I was reading the notes. So Leach has recovered from uh, the gravel trap, so he's back in the uh, in the lane now. So that means we will definitely be going green this time through. That is, as long as there's no uh, gravel trap and everything on the road. But I can see out the commentary box under the Pemrod Bridge that there is no gravel trap, no marshals down there. So we are looking set for a four-lap sprint when this safety car returns to the lane. Bit of traditional uh, saloon car. Fair four lap, four lap sprint here at Sandown. Everyone's certainly managed to catch their breath. Still, obviously, some concerns that their tyres might not be holding temperature in this uh, slowdown period during the safety car. Very important race in Australian motorsport here this weekend. It will uh, determine the Nationals winner for 2023, like they do in improved production, like they do in Formula V in various categories a one-off race winner takes all sudden death whatever way you want to look at it it's all down to the next four laps for the season 2023 to have a national champion in saloon cars Grant johnson has taken the last three uh, covid before covid and uh, post covid as well so it's been a uh, long time uh, since he did not take victory and if he wins this one he will tie the record I still reckon the guys sitting in uh, fifth and sixth at the moment, Dan um, Daniel Johnson and Adam Lowndes are probably, well, <laughs> the biggest problem is now with this uh, saloon car is it brings number 23 and Scotty Dornan is definitely running hot under the collar and was charging at the field. What it's given is given his car a bit of time to relax and to come back to him a little bit. So his charge will continue. I think there's a, the problem for Grant Johnson backwards, Daniel Johnson, Lowndes, Dawn and Prestopino is that Shembury car we can see in fourth position, a lap down. Of course, he cannot overtake that car before we go back to green. And uh, if Vaughan's well, aware of the that... control line, yeah, the yeah. start finish line. Sorry, that's what I was meant to say. Yeah, exactly. So uh, if Vaughan is aware of that, uh, he will go early, I imagine, to try and gap and just maybe take the top two with him and not the rest of the field. Grant Johnson will be hoping Shembury makes a blinding restart. And here we go. Vaughan going into the final sequence of corners. When's he going to put the power down? We're waiting, we're hearing, and now he's gone. Power is flag. down. Good restart from 
the fourth driver, the Tickford Super 2 driver ahead of Lindorf. And there we go, Shepherd was not overtaken by Grant Johnson. And that's uh, meant that Grant Johnson comes under pressure from Daniel Johnson. No relation, these two. One from Western Australia, one from Victoria. And it's the Victorian in the Falcon up the inside. But John uh, Grant Johnson holds it around the outside off three wide further back. Dornan. The Lowndes in the middle and Prestopino on the inside and Dornan for the second time has to uh, take avoiding action at turn number one. This time no wall contact. Well he's covered left and right of uh, that little bit of straight hasn't he? He's get, seen the dirt on both sides. There's uh, Daniel Johnson. He goes oh, through yeah. and uh, gee we get him sideways out over the back of the ripple strips. There's Shembury. He's been knocked around all over the place on this restart and Water will find its level because he finds his way all the way back to the non-championship cars. Harvey has got through and Lindorf off camera. So the Flying Fords both yet to take a race victory here today, but they uh, might be taking the national championship out. The two youngsters of this field are now one and two. Wow, that was uh, a big move there by Grant Johnson to get through on oh, Adam Lowndes and Lindorf going backwards, slowing. Definitely got a mechanical concern there and will take no further part. That's all he needed. And car one, a five second penalty. So that will exclude Grant Johnson. He won't want to get that information down the radio, that's for sure. I thought he was all right on the restart, but he must have overlapped or something. Oh, the 515, that's uh, Neefsi. So close to the wall. He was the one that had the moment to turn number four as well. So his tyres have not come back up to temperature very quickly at all. And here we go. Move four position. Dornan up the inside now of Prestopino. It's changed a lot on this restart, hasn't it? And now Lowndes locks up just out of these two as well. So Dornan does make the position on Jacob Prestopino and now he'll be looking at Lowndes who's had a couple of lockups in this race. The most recent as you say at turn number one and Grant Johnson is back on the tail of Daniel Johnson uh, just ahead of these three. It's all on on this race. I can hear a car uh, is it changing gear or there's a bit of a, a weird noise I thought through my headphones there but it looks like we're all okay no incident down at turn number four hearing a missed gear so I heard a car on the rev limiter I believe here we go Grant Johnson jinx to the inside on Daniel Johnson they're going to hold it side by side around the back of the course Daniel Johnson takes to the inside and allows Grant Johnson to file on through just uh, it's awkward that corner isn't it to go too wide around. it's awkward when you've got grant and uh daniel doing the same corner at the same time as well two johnsons head to head there prestopino taking on dornan now this is going to be a good battle dornan hasn't given any quarter since that turn one incident and prestopino arrests it back from him harvey now takes a lap record in position number two away from vaughan so we have two young guns out in front in the right way Industrial Saloon Car Nationals, two laps to go. Three tenths quicker was Harvey that time through his close margin down to seven tenths, but here we go. Up the inside, Lowndes back on Prestopino. Prestopino, oh, two wheels and goes through the grass. Just about keeps it facing in the right direction and holds on to the position. The gloves are off now, the safety cars come in. It's all to play for. Out there on the racetrack at the moment, we've got to remember Grant Johnson's got that five second penalty. So anything can still happen out there. There is a podium still up for grabs. I'm not one for spiteful racing, but every now and again, there's an opportunity for some spiteful racing and you leave it for the Nationals and the last race of the, uh, of the weekend for it. And they are absolutely red hot onto it. Lap record now to Mason Harvey. He will take that away with him unless Brad Vaughan or one of the other contenders can arrest it. But the Western Australian will go back to Western Australia. There is a big spin. We missed that. That's Blake Harris, I think, that's yes. gone off backwards there. And uh, we were just outside the top ten at that point in time. Yeah, Blake Harris has uh, recovered well after an issue in uh, heat number one early yesterday morning and recovered into a really nice position, but unfortunately all that has come unstuck with a mistake at Term 1 and Vaughan responds with the lap record now. Uh, he extends that by just four hundredths of a second. It's all to play for on this final lap. Daniel Johnson's fourth on the road. Uh, with Grant Johnson's penalty, he will be third, but he wants to do it on the racetrack, not, uh, not inheriting it with a five-second penalty. To. Gee, I tell you what, Daniel Johnson in here for a podium if they can manage to hang it on. And he has done his personal best the last time around as well. So the Victorian is feeling a bit hot under the collar and wants to take it up to his namesake. It's Jono versus Jono. How Aussie do you want to get? Ford versus Holden. Jono versus Jono for the last spot on the podium.
Daniel Johnson, best of the Victorians as well. So uh, he's looking to make at least uh, one Victorian on the podium in this final race. But it's the South Aussie from the West Aussie out front, Vaughan and Harvey. And Harvey's closing that gap down. Is it too little, too late? He flicks it in to Dandenong Road. He's certainly close, the margin on this final lap. Oh, I think he lost a bit of momentum on the exit. He's flashing the lights. He's trying everything to put Brad Vaughan off into the final sequence of corners. I don't think he's going to quite do it. Look at they can see the margin visibly closing, but it's not going to be enough. Brad Vaughan, the South Australian, is going to take out the Saloon Car Nationals. Brilliant performance from the Super 2 driver, beating the young Charger Harvey by just five tenths of a second at the line. Getting home next will be Grant Johnson. He'll be relegated back a couple of spots. So Daniel Johnson will be on the podium for the right way. Industrial Saloon Car Nationals. He does a uh, tremendous job there. Just watching uh, coming around. Oh, two wheeling it. Off into the boonies and into the tyre oh. barrier. In fact, missed the tyre barrier. Bounces back on in true VN fashion. There's a taxi fare to pick up. Press on and drives it all the way to the line. That was a fair old bounce off the barriers too. That was Martin. He was second in the uh, older spec class cars. So, uh, yeah, a bit of a uh, moment there. Just about <laughs> kept it uh, upright, frankly. There was uh, lots of uh, two-wheel action, and he does cross the line 